All right, in this one, we are going to practice a little bit of how to turn regular skeletal drawings into Fisher drawings and vice versa. Um, so for this, let's talk about our regular skeletal. We normally draw things sort of zigzag like this. So here'd be six carbons. Here's an aldehyde. How do we draw ROH groups from this? So for this, I'm going to pull out some green. Well, the idea is when I've got a system like this, what I've really got are some carbons that are in down positions and some carbons that are in up positions. And I guess we can highlight here's an up, here's an up, here's an up. Right? Just as we do the zigzag, there'll be some on top and some on bottom. So how do we use that info? How does that help us here? I'm going to give you a few simple rules that will help you kind of visualize changes for stereochemistry. Because two of our bonds are in the plane of the paper, the other two are actually going away or coming out at us. And so the ones on the down carbons go down, one away and down, one towards us and down. On the up carbon, one goes up and away, and one goes up and is coming towards us. So dashed again is the what oh, into the board wedge, solid wedge is coming towards our face. And this is true for all my down carbons and all my up carbons. So actually think of the groups coming off of these zigzags like this. There's one going away and one coming towards us. How we turn that into a Fisher drawing. And for this, we're just going to use symbols. Going to go A, B, C, and D. So in this case, A, B, C, and D are all coming towards us at the moment. And I'm going to use... Z, Y, X, and W for the things going away from us. How do those translate into the Fisher drawings? How do we swap these around? Well, remember, in a Fisher drawing, we set up our carbons. So we're going to set up six carbons here. That first one is an aldehyde, and it doesn't have a left or rightness. And in a sugar, that last one is two hydrogens and an OH, which we didn't draw any on this molecule, but that would be the idea in a sugar. But because it would have two hydrogens, it wouldn't be chiral. So we're not concerned about left and rightness. For these middle four carbons, though, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, and carbon 5, those are the ones that we've filled in. These do have a left and right. So let's imagine that we are looking down from above. So we've got an eyeball here. It's looking down. And it's going to see right in between the bonds coming at it. So that's third carbon, that's this carbon at the moment. Well, if I'm looking down and I have the aldehyde, now imagine their hair, head here, nose, mouth, there you go, there's a person. Don't pay me for my drawing skills. Well, the forehead, the aldehyde's above it. So what we see is the aldehyde's above and we're looking right down at this carbon. As far as that eye is concerned, they're both, both B and Y are going towards the eye. So try this, hold your thumb and your pointer finger towards your eyeballs. It doesn't matter which hand, just like basically touch your eyeballs with them and then pull them back a little bit. They're coming towards you. The rest of your hand is kind of going away from you. Let's say I did with the B and Y, they're coming towards you and at that angle, 
B is actually going to be on the right of that vision. And the Y will be on the left. This is a rule we can come up with that, which is just that on up carbon, a wedge is on right in Fisher. And that's always going to be the case. In fact, we'll see that when we look at D and W. The way we draw the fissure from the wedge says that, hey, any of the up carbons, whatever the wedge, the solid one coming towards the viewer when you're looking at the flat drawing, that will always end up on the right. So if we go down here, the, the fourth carbon, sorry, the fifth, D and W, they're coming up towards the view from above. D is on the right, W is on the left. Well, what's that do for our other? I'm going to swap color here. Let's pick something a little different. So if we want to talk about carbon number two. So carbon number two here. Well, those are going away. From that viewer from up above, A and Z are going away. And remember, a Fisher drawing always is coming towards you. Result is we have to rotate this whole thing around. So take your left hand, put your thumb and your index finger out and point them away from you. Just stick them out in front of you. Your thumb should be on the right at the moment and your index should be on the left. Now just twist your hand around until your fingers are pointing towards your eyeballs. At this point your thumb should be on the left and your index on the right. So just follow your thumb for a minute. If they're pointed towards your eyeballs, your thumb is on the left. Spin them around to point them away, your thumb is on the right. Bring them back, your thumb is on the left. Every time you rotate 180 degrees, which side it looks like it's on has flipped. Well, this happens with the A and the Z. Originally, the A is coming out at us, but when we flip it around, it'll be going away from us. And the Z, which is originally going away from us, when we flip it around, will be coming out of the board. The result of this is that A ends up on the left and Z ends up on the right. Oops, wrong. There we go. A and Z. Which brings up our second rule. Down carbon dashes are on right in Fisher, which means if we want to look over at our fourth carbon, that is Z or C and X, C and X. So we're going to be looking here now. Well, X is the dash on the down carbon, so X will be on the right in the Fisher, which leaves C to be over there on the left. And so a zigzag drawing can be converted into a fissure by following these two rules. These two rules are a quick way. You don't have to imagine it twisting around. You don't have to point your fingers into your eyeballs and away over and over. If we follow just these two rules, we can identify and convert our, no, uh, sorry, our skeletal line drawings into fissure drawings. So let's scroll this down a little bit. Let's try to employ this for our next one. I'm going to draw one. We'll do a smaller sugar. I'm going to put OH there. The rest of those are hydrogens because it's a sugar. And then the end is CH2OH. It won't have a chiral center. See if you can take this zigzag drawing and turn it into a fissure. Go ahead and pause and give that a shot for a minute. All right, if you give that a shot, let's work through it. It's one, two, three, four, it's five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. It starts with an aldehyde. And then we're gonna have 
three carbons that are chiral and that last one is not. So how do I identify what goes into each spot? Well, let's start up here. Carbon number two, I have an OH on the right, or sorry, OH coming out at us. It's got a wedge and it's a top carbon. So if I have an up carbon with a wedge, whatever's in the wedge is on the right. So I'm gonna get that OH on the right. If I go and I look at the next one, so third carbon. Well, in this case, my OH again, it's a wedge, but down carbons, dashes are on the right in the fissure. So the hydrogen is going to be on the right. That OH is going to be on the left. And then for the last one, let's put one here. Well, that wedge on an up carbon has a hydrogen. And so up carbon wedge is on right. The hydrogen's on the right. The OH will be on the left. Which means whatever this is, well, our last chiral carbon has the OH on the left, so this is an L sugar. But here's how we've been able to translate a normal line drawing, a skeletal drawing, into the Fisher drawings to help us identify where the OH and our sugar go so that we can figure out the stereochemistry from it.